Welcome to California Unearthed. Today we're here in the city of Shasta Lake, also known as the Pine Grove District here in Shasta County. But we're here to talk about the giant orange stands like the one behind me. This has been here since 1953, but it is not the original location. The original location is just down the street here off of Highway 99, which is now Cascade Boulevard, and was built in 1946 by the Castle family, George and Adelaide Castle. And we're gonna talk about the history of that along with the history of the giant orange stands all together. So come join me as we unearth this wonderful history of a piece of Americana and roadside attraction. In 1771, Franciscan fathers established Mission San Gabriel in Los Angeles, where in 1804, they were the first to plant and cultivate a variety of citrus fruits, including oranges. Those oranges were called agua tibia. They were a sweet orange and a variety of the Valencia orange that we know today. The original trees no longer exist at the mission, but 10 genetic descendants of those first trees were planted in 2006 and now grow right where the old grove once stood. It wasn't until 1840s when downtown Los Angeles was the site of the state's very first commercial citrus farm planted by frontiersman William Wolfskill, considered the founder of California's citrus industry. Wolfskill grew hundreds of lemons and orange seedlings that he obtained from the missionaries at San Gabriel Mission. While his early success showed that there was a local regional market for citrus, it wasn't until the gold rush of 1849 when that market grew exponentially and established a statewide market due to the increase in demand for oranges in the gold fields. Because fresh citrus is useful in combating scurvy, which is a vitamin C deficiency and ran rapid throughout the gold fields here in California. Speaking of gold rush, California's oldest and living orange tree dates back to 1856 and resides in Oroville, California. When you think of orange trees, you think of Southern California, Orange and Riverside counties. But believe it or not, the oldest living orange tree is here in Oroville, California, which is just outside of Chico here in the northern part of the state. It is the mother orange tree. It is not the first orange tree in California, but it is the oldest. It was planted in Bidwell Bar in 1856 by Judge Joseph Lewis. He bought the orange tree in the streets of Sacramento. The tree came from Mazablan, Mexico. When he purchased it, it was about two or three year old seedling. It has been transplanted a couple of different times from the Bidwell Bar area because of flooding to be able to save the tree. And then it was moved here in 1964 from the Oroville Dam area. They were building the Oroville Dam, so they transplanted it here to be able to save it once again. Like I said, this was planted in 1856. It is not the first orange tree in California, but it is the oldest. So here's another plaque describing a little bit about the history of this orange tree. And the orange tree is literally right behind me right here. But this is another little plaque. They have a nice little area set up here. Let's check out this tree. So here it is, the oldest citrus tree here in California. It is a Mediterranean sweet orange. It's an absolutely beautiful tree, and it's a treasure that we still have this tree with us today. The oldest producing orange tree in California. We're going to do a walk around the tree real quick. It is still producing, as you see. There is fruit still on the tree. Uh, let's do a walk around.
Starting in 1873, oranges became California's second gold rush with the newly established transcontinental rail system and the introduction of the naval orange into California. The naval orange was a far superior variety than any other variety that was grown in California at the time because it was seedless, sweet, and ripened in the winter months of Southern California's Mediterranean climate. The fruit was a mutation from an orange tree that grew in a Brazilian monastery. The U.S. Department of Agriculture obtained cuttings from that tree in 1873. They sent two or three starter trees to the spiritualist and woman suffrage activist Eliza Tibbetts in Riverside to see if she could make these trees grow in Southern California. And grow they did. And what's actually kind of funny is the second oldest tree in California was planted by Eliza Tibbetts and it is one of the parent naval orange trees that she planted in 1873. These trees produced an incredible orange. It was a huge golden globe that overshowered every other variety that was growing in Southern California at the time. The naval orange was a key to the establishment of the California commercial citrus industry we all know and love. In 1895, orange packing houses began popping up everywhere in Southern California. There are so many different packing houses in competition with one another. They were all fighting to sell oranges to the East Coast and Midwest of America. In doing so, they created what they called crate art. It was advertisements on the ends of orange crates, wooden orange crates, and it was beautiful artwork that advertised each company. And a lot of that artwork is highly sought after as collector items today. Riverside truly was the nucleus for the second gold rush here in California, that being the orange industry from 1873 up to the mid-1900s. And so much so that there are two attractions in Riverside that are a must-see. One is the Citrus State Park off of Interstate 15, where they actually do have a giant orange stand inside the park. And the second is at UC Riverside, the experimental station. It's a citrus experimental station where they have collected every variety of citrus known to man in the world. So each one of those are a video in itself. So let's get to what this video is about and let's talk about those giant oranges. Beginning in the 1920s, driving the new highways and byways became a more effective and popular way to travel over the old wagon roads of the past. With the increase in motorists, roadside attractions began to pop up and become popular places for for people to stop and stretch their legs. One of the more popular roadside attractions here in California was that of the giant orange stands, which lined many of the highways and byways throughout California. Fast food and diner drive-ins were still 25 to 30 years away. So these giant oranges operated as juice stands, urging awaiting thirsty travelers to pull over and partake in a cold glass of fresh squeezed orange juice, lemonade, orange shake, or in some cases, burgers or hot dogs. In 1926, Frank E. Powell started his chain of giant orange stands, opening up his first stand at 11th near E Street in Tracy, California, which spawned a franchise and imitators throughout California. Before trying out orange juice, though, Powell took the curbside lemonade stand to a whole new level when he opened up his first and only giant lemonade stand in Menlo Park. He called it the Jumbo Lemon Stand. The Giant Orange franchise peaked in the 1950s with approximately 16 different stands built throughout Northern California, from Bakersfield up to Redding. Other orange stand buildings like Mammoth Orange and others dotted the landscape as well, with one landing in Fremont on Route 66 and another in the Citrus State Historic Park in Riverside County. It's rumored that a stand could easily go through 6,000 oranges in a week. I know that the one in Reading went through about 2,000 oranges a week, definitely quenching the thirst of weary travelers who pulled over for a quick drink. After the 1950s, 
the orange stands began to decline in popularity as the emergence of fast food restaurants and drive-in diners offered a more diverse menu and comfortable surroundings, becoming more popular stops for weary travelers. Also, the passing of the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1956, highways like Route 66 and 99 began to be converted or bypassed by higher speed freeways, which made it more difficult or inconvenient to pull over and stop for a glass of orange juice. Although there's only a few giant orange stands remaining here in California, fresh squeezed orange juice is no longer being served from the windows of these stands, but they are being reconfigured and used for other things like this beloved piece of Americana here in Shasta Lake City. This cafe has changed hands many times over the decades, but is still one of Shasta County's go-to eateries and attractions. Normally, the bright orange color of the giant orange can be seen from the freeway, attracting curious travelers to stop and ask questions. Sadly, as you see, the giant orange is no longer orange, but more of a pink color. Hopefully this is only temporary and they'll bring back that bright orange color so they can attract visitors from the freeway once again. This particular giant orange stand was built by George and Adelaide Castle in 1946, right here where the 5 freeway now runs. This is only a couple hundred yards from its current location where it has sat since 1950. George was born in 1912 in Canada, where Adelaide was born in 1920 in Syracuse, New York, but grew up in Pittsburgh, California after moving to California right after she was born in 1920. She graduated high school at the age of 17, but after high school is where she met George at a dance in Oakland. The dance took place in April, and by June of that same year, they were married in Spokane, Washington, and they remained married for 63 years. During World War II, the the castles lived in Alameda and Oakland, where George was a welder and builder for the Liberty ships. Once the war was over in 1945, the castles in the spring of 1946 knew they did not want to raise their two boys in the city and preferred to go to more of a mountainous country atmosphere because George, who had never seen the mountains before until he was 23 years old, when he and a friend jumped a boxcar and traveled to Vancouver, Washington. Jumping box cars was a normal activity back in those days. After that, he always wanted to live not too far, if not in the mountains. So when the castles decided to leave the city, they picked three locations to take a look at. Reading, Medford, and Santa Rosa. George's brother Walter, who lived in Portland, Oregon, wanted to move south to California. So Medford may have been off the table. In 1946, the two families met at the Lorenz Hotel in downtown Reading to have breakfast and discuss what they could do as a family to make money and maybe start a business. Adelaide, who was drinking a glass of orange juice, came up with the idea, hey, I know what we can do. We can sell orange juice. So they bought a piece of property right off of Highway 99 in the Pine Grove community, amongst other families in the area. There was a house and two shacks on the property. Walter and his wife took the house, while George and Adelaide took the two shacks and created one, with only one room being completely enclosed, and that was the bathroom. The rest of it was just two by fours so they never did make it to medford or santa rosa so walter and george built a round building with three windows and in the back they built a small room where they cut and juiced the oranges with an industrial juicer they purchased their oranges from a man from oroville who would bring up 10 crates of about 200 oranges per crate from los angeles they had to use a certain size orange to be able to fit in the industrial juicer they then hired a man by the name of abe Burns to paint them four signs for the stand, and with that, the northernmost giant orange was born. The castles would pay Frank Powell $25 a year for a franchise fee. A glass of ice cold orange juice would set you back 21 cents 20 cents for the orange juice and one cent for tax. Serving ice cold orange juice was perfect during Reading's hot summer months. They would get a big block of ice and shave off what they needed for each glass of orange juice. The castles also served hot dogs as well, not just orange juice. 
They really put their hearts and souls into the giant orange. Before hiring extra help, the castles had a system down. If George was alone and got too busy to handle it himself, he would ring a bell that rung up to the house so his wife would know to come down and help. Once extra help was hired, they would arrive around 10 o'clock each day. The stand was open from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. each day from about June to October, depending on the weather. When they closed shop at 10 o'clock each night, they would clean the entire place spotless due to the fact that orange juice would make a huge sticky mess. While Adelaide took the money and went up to the house to do the books for the day, George would finish up on cleanup and get rid of all the orange peels down to the dump. When it was all said and done, they would get to bed about 1, 1 in the morning then be up by 6 to do it all over again the next day. About a year later, George's brother Walter and his wife Allie bought an orchard in Yuba City and left George in Adelaide with the giant orange. In the beginning, the castles had built a shelter over the giant orange for the cars to drive underneath in order to get out of the hot sun. One winter, it snowed every Friday for five weeks straight. In the last Friday, the shelter couldn't take it anymore and collapsed. But they rebuilt it, and that spring they were off and running once again. Seven years later, in 1953, the highway department was planning on creating a new Highway 99, later known as Interstate 5, and they wanted the land where the giant orange stood. The castles had to sell. Question was what to do with the giant orange stand. Don and Jerry Dury lived close and they wanted the orange. So they put the stand on stilts and took it across the street and set it where it is today. Harriet Baker Dury took the giant orange stand, attached a restaurant to it, but later created an antique store. Today it is Joe's Giant Orange, which serves up Mexican and American dishes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Dinner. And if you go inside, you will see a collage of photographs dating back to 1946 showing the giant orange in its heyday. As for the castles, once they sold the giant orange, George went into real estate in which he retired from in 1969. Adelaide went to Shasta College from 1952 to 1960 and later was employed by the Shasta School District main office. You know, all the times that I've been here for breakfast, I never realized that they actually have an orange tree out here. That's really, really cool. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I want to give a huge shout out to the Shasta Lake Heritage Society for supplying me with all the history and the photographs of this giant orange. Thank you guys so, so much. Once again, that's the Shasta Lake Heritage Society. You guys are awesome over there. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you did, smash the like button, follow me here on YouTube, subscribe. If you haven't been subscribed, I'm going to go grab some breakfast, and we'll see you guys on the next episode.